Welcome to your weekly airplane news update. This is the week of August 23rd, 2021. This week I got four topics. The first one I'm kind of excited because this is my alma mater. Uh, Florida Tech purchased a electric trainer. We'll talk about more details on that. We'll talk about how drones and planes don't mix. We actually just talked about this in our um, uh, drone news update, but I'm going to bring it up as well because this is important for everybody to share the airspace. We'll talk about a, a new EV tall called the Dufour Aero EV tall electric vertical and takeoff and landing aircraft. And then lastly, we'll talk about an Alaska airline uh, flight that was evacuated because of a cell phone fire. And I want to bring this up because there's a lot of stories to be learned right here. So let's get to it. And the first story this week comes from my alma mater at Florida Tech in Melbourne, Florida, and they purchased an electric aircraft. Now, we actually talked about this electric aircraft in the past. It's the Pipistrelle Velis Electro. It's a European aircraft. And, and FIT, or Florida Tech, purchased it to conduct research and to help their students experience what they call cutting-edge technology. Now, at the moment, the aircraft is still experimental. It's not FAA certified, but it was the, fully, the first fully electric aircraft to be certified in Europe with EASA, which is the equivalent of the FAA, uh, back in June of 2020. It's a two-seater aircraft. It's a, it's a primary trainer. It's nothing really fancy. Uh, it's got a liquid-cooled electric motor on it. It's called an E811. Not that it really matters to anyone. But this thing will cruise at 90 knots. It's got a payload of about 378 pounds, and it it has up to 50 minutes of endurance plus the flight, the VFR flight reserve. So I think it's interesting. I know I've talked about it before and I know I've said, you know, 50 minutes for a mission is not a whole lot, but batteries are only going to get better from here. And uh, hopefully we can start to see these aircraft. I do believe that the electric aircraft are the future, especially in flight training. Imagine an aircraft, and I've said this a million times, and I've, I've said it on, on these videos every couple of weeks. Imagine a primary trainer that can fly and be affordable. I mean, an electric aircraft is going to be a lot cheaper on maintenance, on obviously on fuel, and um, and and. To me, this is a revolution where we can have more people learning to fly aircraft because now it's more affordable. So um, I hope FIT gets to do uh, great things with this and I hope we get to report some more. They said they were going to provide the first 50 hours of uh, flight data to the FAA in order to help this aircraft get uh, certified in, in the U.S. Next story this week, not so good. Uh, there were two airplane to drone collision. One happened in Canada, one uh, supposedly happened in the US. We don't have all the proofs yet, but uh, in Canada, a 172 that was doing a training flight hit a Matrice 210, which is a fairly large aircraft that was being flown by the Canadian police. Apparently, the drone was flying without uh, having submitted any kind of information about the flight. So the aircraft, the, the man aircraft, did not know that they were in the area. The drone hit, or the aircraft hit the drone, whichever way you want to look at it, uh, right in the nose. So what happened is there's actually quite a bit of damage. You can see in the picture right here. It also hit the propeller, which means that, that uh, Cessna is probably going to get a new uh, engine or an engine overhaul. Uh, NAV Canada, which is the, the country's air navigation service provider, said that they were not notified about the drone flight. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. But uh, this is one of two this week. The second one happened in the US. That happened in Chicago. And the aircraft, the Embraer flight operated by Envoy Air, was taking off and supposedly hit an airplane at 2,500 feet. The um, controller, the interesting part about the story is that if you listen to the audio, the controller was actually uh, talking to other people and saying that a drone was reported in the area and they talked to this envoy flight and they said, have, you know, have you spotted the, the drone? And they said, yeah, I think we just hit it. And so um, they came back, landed. It looks like there was some damage. I couldn't get pictures of the damage. Um, again, there is not 100% proof that th this was actually a drone, but uh, based on the reports from air traffic control, it looks like this was indeed another uh, drone collision. So uh, it'll be interesting to hear if we hear more from the FAA. Obviously, we all have to share the airspace. I know you guys know that we teach uh, drone classes as well, and this is one of the big things that we try to, um, to share with drone pilots is the fact that um, well, there's other people flying in the airspace and we got to be uh, careful flying around them. Next story this week is an EV tall electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. We've reported quite a bit on these because, well, I personally believe I think this is uh, something that we're going to see in the future, in the near future, flying around in our airspace. 
something else to avoid when you fly your main aircraft. This is a manned EV tall, so this is not something that's remote piloted. Uh, this is called the Aero 3, and it's uh, made by Dufour. And this is an eight-seater aircraft that has a cruise speed of 215 miles an hour, so pretty fast, and a pretty long range, 630 miles. The useful load is pretty high, 1,650 pounds. Um, they are working on two models. This is the Aero 3, which is the larger one. They also have the Aero 2 aircraft that's going to be designed for logistics, monitoring, mapping, and public safety. So this is exciting. I love seeing all these models out there. I hope we see more of these. And, uh, and this, hopefully, like I said, with the uh, electric aircraft, kind of revolutionize the way that we fly aircraft and fly in the airspace. Last thing this week, kind of a scary thing, a cell phone that was in the cargo of an Alaska airline flight caught fire on Monday. This was in a, a Boeing 737-900. They were lucky because they were actually on the ground uh, waiting for a gate at the uh, Seattle-Tacoma airport. They were coming from New Orleans. And the fire was extinguished, but uh, you can see from the picture here that somebody took from the flight. It kind of looks like a, a disco, but it's not. It really is somebody trying to evacuate or people trying to evacuate from this aircraft as the fire in the cargo uh, from this uh, cell phone. Now, this is something that we talk about in our course. If, if you're in our uh, private pilot or instrument course, you know that we talk about the danger of having these batteries and there's a reason why you can't have lithium batteries inside of the cargo uh, because if something happens then uh, then the aircraft can basically burn to the ground so we were talking about this in the office you know you, you go fly you have your ipad you have your phone you have your laptop imagine how many battery cells that represents and then multiply that by the number of passengers because Chances are everybody's flying with at least a cell phone, possibly a tablet, and possibly a laptop. And when you put all of that together, when you have the, uh, the thermal runaway that you can get with these devices, um, it, it can create a, a major nightmare. So be careful. This is the lesson to be learned from you. I know a lot of you are in training at the moment. Be careful what you put in the cargo space that you can't access or can't easily access in flight. Even if it's in a 172 or even if it's a, another aircraft, be careful with what you put in there because if you have an in-flight fire and you, you can't deal with it, well, then you're definitely in trouble. So anyway, that's all I have for this week. Like, subscribe, comment, and then I'll see you guys next week.